Today, we're going to talk about ADHD with Dr. Dylan Gold, a licensed clinical psychologist specializing in treatment of children and adolescents with ADHD. So Dr. Gold, what does ADHD look and feel like for children and adolescents? So at its core, ADHD has three primary <clears throat> core symptoms, right? We have inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. And inattention could be anything from struggling to focus, getting distracted really easily, having a hard time sticking to tasks, losing things easily, <clears throat> forgetfulness. And then our hyperactive impulsive behaviors are things like calling out, interrupting, um, you know, running ahead when you're walking down the street, um, climbing things inappropriately, blurting things out, snatching and cutting in line and things like that. Um, so those would be sort of the main, the main ways they show up. What would be five tips that you could give parents or caregivers with kids of ADHD? First, certainly would be to give grace. Um, ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, and it means that the ADHD brain struggles with self-monitoring, which essentially means to like observe what we're doing and to make decisions in a kind of thoughtful way. And so oftentimes there are behaviors that can be really challenging and really understandably frustrating for the grownups out there. Um, so we want to be able to look at these kids who are often amazing, bright, talented, fantastic humans. And it can be kind of confusing when there's all these other behaviors going on. So when we can understand it from a neurodevelopmental lens and have some, some of that compassion and grace, I think that's a really important attitude to take on. Is it easy? No. And I think it's, it's really key. Um, the second, and I think it kind of goes along with that is leading with the positive. Kids get so much negative feedback all day long, particularly kids who struggle with behavior. Um, and so really noticing the positive things that kids are doing when they are sitting quietly, when they are following the rules, when they are listening, you want to really shout it out because these are the kids who are not getting the, that kind of feedback very often. Um, so that would be the second. The third would be as much as possible making things predictable. Um, so really, you really want to set the environment up in as predictable of a way as possible. It does not mean that everything is predictable, but if you have a schedule that works each day, you want to stick to that. You want to review that. You want to help the child understand what's coming next because oftentimes transitions are really tricky. And so having that opportunity to really help kids know what is coming can be huge. So that's number three. Um, so the next two will do something a little bit more teen specific. So what can often happen is that um, parents will really get get caught up in what is what should my child be doing versus what they are doing. And given again that ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, oftentimes we will see kids who are in middle school or high school who are really struggling organizationally with some of the things that maybe their same age neurotypical peers are not actually struggling with in the same way. And so parents will sort of get to this place where it'll kind of be, oh, well, he should be doing this or she should be doing this. And of course, it's frustrating. We want our kids to be on par with what they quote unquote should be doing or what their peers are doing. And when it comes to ADHD, sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. Um, and so it's all about meeting kids where they're at. That applies for younger kids as well. But I think it really hits home when it comes to teens. Um, and then the last thing I would suggest is just like how younger kids benefit from positive reinforcement and all of the positive skills that we've alluded to, <clears throat> teens don't grow out of that. You might use a different voice, right? You might, you might praise for different things. You might give positive attention from different things, but connection is really important throughout and when families are dealing with a lot of stress that goes along with managing a teen with ADHD and teenagers are often much more inclined to want to be in their room and doing their whole independent thing, it really can get lost, the effort to connect. And so just like we want parents to connect with their younger kids, we want in their own teenage way 
there to be some of those positive interactions too. So be mindful. How much am I nagging my kid about homework versus like spending some quality time? Um, and so I think that's really important too. And that a lot of the same things are needed, right? They might need help with their schedule. They might need help looking through their assignments and seeing what needs to be added in. So again, it kind of comes down to the shoulds versus the, but where are we, where are we really? And how can I support my child where they are?